What's up, everybody? Let's do this damn thing. It's another gig log. Gotta talk about it. I just worked an event. What was great? What sucked? What can we learn from it? A whole lot, actually, because this was one of those events where you might think it's the DJ's nightmare, but it's not. Sometimes things fight against a packed dance floor, and it's our job not to force it as a wedding DJ, as an event DJ. It's very easy to think, if the dance floor is not packed, I'm blowing it. That's not actually the case, and I'll tell you why. So stick around and enjoy. If you don't know what's going on, every time I work a gig, I come and do this. I hit record, and I talk about what I learned from it so that you can take my experiences and put them into your own practice as your own mobile DJ so that you can earn your own freedom. You can work for yourself. I do that on an average of one and a half days a week all year long, making six figures. It's freaking great. It's a lot of work. It doesn't work for everybody. It can work for you. If you want to know how, head over to freedomdj.com. I got you. Now, when you're hired to pack a dance floor, obviously, you want to pack the dance floor. Like, that's the whole plan. I know that. However, some couples aren't into it. I, I want to, you know, in fact, I'll pull this up for you. I'm going to read you a review that I just received from a couple that actually, they didn't, no one danced. Like, no one danced at all, all night. I mean, there was like maybe five people who went out there for like two songs and then they went back to their tables and danced from their tables. And you might think like, well, that's not ideal. No, it's, it's not. I, in a perfect world, I'm going to have a packed dance floor all the time, every time. But some couples don't love that. They just don't. Some couples don't love to be um, pressured to do that. So let me pull this up. I'm going to get this review. There it is. All right, so here you go. This is from a couple where literally no one danced all night, all night. They stood at their tables. They hung out there. I played everything possible to see if they would get out on the dance floor. And once it was obvious that they weren't going to, no matter what you played, I just gave them an appropriate soundtrack to chill and enjoy themselves from their tables. The request came in as such, or I'm sorry, the review came in as such. Adam was absolutely amazing to work with. He's a class act and a total crowd pleaser. We received so many compliments from our guests. I had a special request for a memorial video for a pup that we had lost to lymphoma, and he didn't hesitate to make it a flawless addition in the reception. He was even so kind to read an opening that I wrote but knew I couldn't get through without tears. Adam made me feel like family from our very first meeting all the way through our wedding. We would highly recommend him um, to any of your events. Now, you might think in the moment, oh, my God, nobody's dancing. What am I doing wrong? Was I doing anything wrong? You just heard that review. No, not at all, because this is the kind of couple that when I asked them on our pre-meeting, uh, our pre-wedding call, like, how much do you value the dance floor and how much do you want to be out there? And when I know that answer, then I know that it's not a huge deal if not everyone's out there packing it in like sardines in a can. Because actually, their vibe was more like, we just kind of want to like walk around and talk to our guests and keep it chill, maybe play some lawn games outside. Um, there's a fire pit. We have s'mores going. So, like, if people dance, that's cool. But, like, I'm not super, like, worried if they don't. And so what happens in that situation when you notice that people aren't dancing, you might, know, you might like, in your head be like, oh, man, I'm blowing it. But just remember this review. That's why I wanted to come on here today and just tell you that not every couple – values a packed dance floor over getting to have the night that they wanted to enjoy, right? And in their minds, being forced onto the dance floor wasn't going to be a night they were going to enjoy. I can tell you right now, for two introverted people getting married, the last thing that they want is a DJ who's going to get on the mic that's insecure at an empty dance floor and start calling people out. Oh my God, it's so cringe. People can't stand this when you're just like, come on, table seven, I see you dancing at your tables. Let's get out to the dance floor. Let's go. Amateur hour. Okay, please don't do that to your guests. Like, don't do that to your, your clients. Nobody likes that kind of a spotlight unless it's like a very specific type of couple, and you better know that ahead of time. They love that kind of a spotlight, that kind of a, a couple. Okay. But most guests don't want that. Most couples don't want that. And when you start feeling insecure as the DJ – it shows in what you're doing. Imagine this, okay? Imagine people are actually having a great time. You're watching. You can see that everyone's having a blast. They just don't feel like dancing. It's just one of those nights. 
80% of the people are over age 40. Not a lot of people are drinking. It's a Sunday. Like, there's a lot of things that are fighting against this being a packed dance floor. There's other things to do outside the venue, s'mores, lawn games. There's just a lot of options for other things other than just packing these people in here. So when you start freaking out and seeing like, oh, God, oh, no, oh, no, they're not dancing, they're not dancing, that's two songs in a row, they're not dancing, people are going to think I suck. Remember this review that I, just re- that I just read you. We had so many compliments from our guests, straight from, from the review, because I let them chill. I didn't force them to go out on the dance floor. I'm telling you, it's a little bit scary because you're like, oh, man, like something's always going to go off in your brain, like I wish I could get them dancing. But just remember that pre-show call. Remember the, the question that you asked them when you booked with them, and you put this in your notes. And this is why it's the only question I ask any couple before I book with them, I say, hey, where do you fall on this spectrum? Because I've seen over 350 weddings and types of couples and everything in between. On one end, it's basically, yo, DJ, we're paying you a lot of money, man. Like, I just want you to pack that dance floor. I want my friends out there having a freaking blast. I want people going home at the end of the night with, like, sore feet. And I just want smooth, fun transitions, nothing crazy, just a packed, fun, awesome night on the dance floor. All right, that's one end. But on the other end... And I tell all my couples this. I say it's very, very normal and natural. Like 50% of the couples, they're not like that at all. They're just like, yo, we're a little bit introverted. Maybe it's our second wedding or we're in like our late 30s or 40s or whatever. We're just not super into dancing. So if the dance floor pops off, that's fine. Like, okay. But it's secondary to us hearing the songs we want to hear all night. Now, where do you think you guys fall on that spectrum? And that gives them a very clear oh, we don't have to be forced to dance all night. And if we, if we actually don't want that, we can choose that. Oh, that's nice. I didn't know that was an option. And the other couples are going to be like, oh, no, we want packed dance floor. Okay, well, you know what to do with them, pack the dance floor. And those are pretty easy because those couples are going to come out and dance. They want to dance. The ones who aren't super dancey, people follow what the bride and groom do. So if the bride and groom never go out to the dance floor, it's a little bit tougher to get other people out there. You really have to play to, play to the crowd. So the worst situation is when the couple's like, yeah, we're not really super dancey, but we want a lot of people on the dance floor. However, we only want you to use these songs. And then you're like, uh, okay. Well, okay, this is a lot of Cranberries and Brian Adams. Uh, and you're trying to think to yourself like, okay, well, if they're not going to go out and you're giving me a lot of music that I'm, I'm only allowed to use, how am I going to get this, this dance floor out? And that's when I'll say my, my cake analogy. And if you take nothing else from this video, please take this because this is how you manage clients with um, a little bit ridiculous expectations. So when they give you must playlists and they say, we want you to only use these songs for the dance floor for the entire three hours. Here's the list. We want you to stay within this list. And I say to them, I say, okay, I can listen. I can do that. But then I revert them back to this conversation. Do you remember where you fell on that spectrum? And then they're like, yeah, yeah, we want a packed dance floor. I'm like, awesome. Okay. Remember, we talked about that. Let's just hold that here. Now, I want you to imagine booking with, like, the best baker on the planet. You've read his reviews. He makes the best wedding cake on the planet. And you're like, wow, everybody says this guy's cake is amazing. The reviews are great. The pictures are awesome. Everything I've seen on the Internet is the best cake ever. I want to hire this baker for my wedding to make that cake. And then you hire that baker. But then when it gets to the wedding, you say, except... I want you to only use these ingredients. You can only use this confectionate sugar, this type of icing, and this type of sugar. Like, uh, uh, the baker's going to say, hey, listen, I can do that for you, but it's not going to be the cake that you read about. It's going to be the best cake that I can make you within your guidelines. But if you take away my ability to use all the things that I know will make the cake that you read about, then I can't, I can't guarantee that you're going to get that cake. It's basically going to get the best cake I can give you within your, your guidelines. And they go, oh, that's a really good way to put it. Nobody ever t- tells the baker how to make a cake. Why would you tell the DJ how to pack the dance floor? But they just think, well, I know music. I know what I like. But you have to remind them it's not necessarily about what you like if you were on that front end of the spectrum because we want a whole bunch of people out there. It's got to be a broad net to get a lot of people. You know, you like Brian Adams. That's not going to fit. <laughs> so... We can put that to the dinner, like let's put that there, but for the dance floor, we got to remember that you want a lot of people out there, we got to play songs that a lot of people are going to enjoy. Why don't you pick like 10 or 15 of these that are must plays, and then the rest of these, I'll do my best to get them in there, but just give me some room to do the things that I know will get all those people out there. 
But if they were on the other end of the spectrum, and they're like, yeah, honestly, it's kind of secondary to us hearing the songs we want to hear. Well, then you know, okay, and you just point it out. Now, you know these aren't super dancey songs. If people don't dance to this, that's okay with you? And they say, yeah, yeah, that's fine. That's all right. We just, we, re we really want to hear this music. And then when it happens and no one's dancing, you know that's okay. That's all right. Because then a request like this is going to come in, and they say, thank you, DJ. Thank you for letting us have the song, uh, I'm sorry, the, the soundtrack for the night that we wanted. We didn't want to feel pressured to dance. We're a bunch of correctional officers. Like, we're not throwing down to Kesha all night. We just want to hang out, drink some beers, play some, you know, lawn games, eat some s'mores, and go home happy. And, and we allowed for them to do that. I allowed for that to happen. And I think that's one thing that you should take away from this. That you, I don't want to tell you what you should take away. But it's the hardest thing for me to remember. So if, if this can help you get over a little bit of that natural insecurity of an empty dance floor sometimes, I hope it, I, I really hope this can help because... You're thinking, well, oh, this crowd thinks I suck. Not true. Not true. We received so many compliments from our guests. Read the room. If that, oh, if that whole crowd is just kind of feeling your vibe, but they just don't want to get on the dance floor, then don't force them. Let them do what they want to do. And if there's four people that want to dance, that's cool too. What do you guys want out there? What are you feeling? You want some of that? All right, sure. John Mellencamp, you got it. Just be the fun guy. Right? Be the fun girl. Give them what they want. Let them have fun. And I promise you, they're going to have a freaking blast for the rest of the night. It's the best thing that I do. It's one of the f my favorite things that I do. Um, but it's hard to do. It's, it's reading the room and then creating the soundtrack for that night. It can be scary when there's no, nobody out there. And you're just like, yo, why are you guys not? Like, I'm feeling this. Aren't you feeling this? No, I'm not feeling this song either. You keep playing, you're like, okay, well, they got to dance to this. They don't dance to this one. It's like, all right, well, it's not happening tonight. So you know what? Why don't we just give them something that's going to give them a, a soundtrack for what they need? Hey, folks, we've got lawn games outside. we got s'mores over here. We've got an ice cream bar. i got a photo booth over here, and I'm taking requests up here up all night long. If there's anything you guys need, have fun. And then you just enjoy the night. Right? We're not forcing everybody. Table seven, let's go. Come on, y'all. God, that's cringy. Don't do that. But you know what you can do? You can enjoy the music. You can stay confident. People see that there might not be a lot of people on the dance floor, but it ain't the DJ's fault. DJ's vibing. Don't be ridiculous. But be in the moment. So when that beat drops... People just see you having a good time. They're like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to go outside. I'm going to go out. I'll dance with the DJ, even if I'm the only one out there. It's electric. You can do this. I promise. It's, it's very doable. But just remember, not every wedding has to have a packed dance floor. Check this one out. Here's the videos of them having an awesome time around their tables. And that's okay. I hope you learned from this. I hope you had a great time. See you soon. FreedomDJ.com if you ever want any of this information. But you know what? Just take it for free wherever I give it to you. And go make it your own. Have fun, everybody.